There are so many things to do, from carriage ride to kayaking. We have 11 staffed facilities that are very diverse. We have over 5,000 acres, an equestrian center, three day-use parks, this is one of them, James Island County Park, water parks, Cooper River Marina that has long-term and transient slips, overnight facilities, vacation cottages fully equipped, a campground, two fishing piers, and we have three beach access parks, one at Folly Beach, one on Kiowa, and we have a third one on the Isle of Palms. If you come to Charleston and you don't get on the water somehow, you're only getting a fraction of the picture. And we believe one of the easiest ways is to do it by kayak. It's sort of that uh, transcendental aesthetic where you lose the hustle and the bustle and it just becomes sort of a quiet rhythm with nature sounds and the movement of the water and the tide. Often, um, eastern brown pelicans gliding just above the water and then dolphins breaching so close you can hear them breathe. This psh, it's really a sort of a mental escape. You have a view of the ocean on every hole on this golf course. We're within 10 yards of the ocean and on occasion a ball will get hit over there and um, it's, it's on the ocean. People are walking the beach and the ball's right there where they're walking. Great, great golf in Charleston. Daniel Island has uh, two golf courses that hosted the, the PGA Tour Nationwide Tour Championship. Rivertown Golf Course in Mount Pleasant hosted the Annika Sorum Stand Tournament in the LPGA Tour for years. Charleston National, Patriots Point, some great golf courses. It's about as good as it gets in golf. And a lot of people, when they get done with their golf, they'll go downtown Charleston. The shopping is fabulous. Well, I think you could spend several days shopping the King Street Corridor. There's an enormous variety of shops. It's just such a variety of antique stores in particular. You know, you could start in the morning and start at Broad Street and walk up King Street. And if you went down both sides, you could certainly spend all day. And then those who wish, they can shop in some of the beautiful apparel shops. So it really is a street uh, which is unique in every sense of the word. I find King Street very, very unique in the fact that there's a, a variety of different type of shops here. If you want to go antiquing, or some of the very fine uh, dress or men's haberdashery shops. We have it all here in Charleston. There's a huge surfing community here. It's probably the, the most popular break between Florida and the Outer Banks. We have about 10 big events a year. We have charity events, longboarding events, stand-up paddle boarding. We have a dragon boat team. Um, there's a lot of um, community involvement. And you can surf all year round. If the water warms up in about um, April. Then the wetsuits come off. The surf shops offer lessons and boards and board rental. And there are several surf camps out here. The pier is a popular place mainly for longboarding. It's, it's real popular for longboarding because it's a, a nice long ride. The washout is another break. You can surf um, on the Isle of Palms, Sullivan's Island, Kiowa. Oh gosh, I've seen it probably 12 feet, like double overhead, they call it. Just We do get some really big waves. I'm not sure everyone knows that, but we get really big waves. Yeah, we do. The experience to visit Fort Sumter begins here at the Vista Education Center. And after you go through the Vista Education Center, you embark on one of these vessels of ours and um, you get to do a nice harbor tour, which is really the most beautiful way to see Charleston from the water. The scale of the city is very similar to what you would have found a hundred years ago. The steeples really dominate the downtown skyline and it's a beautiful view of the city of Charleston. After you stop at the fort, uh, one of the National Park Service rangers gives you an introduction to what happened there in 1861 and the events throughout the Civil War. Over seven million pounds of projectiles were fired at the fort, but it was never surrendered. When you're there, you'll actually see the fort as it was constructed back then. You're able to touch it, the cannons are there, the bricks are there, and um, that's your experience. We got a fish on over here. <laughs> The fishery we have here is just 
absolutely amazing and it's, it's really specific to this stretch of the coast. Most of the fish we catch from about early December through the end of March, it's mostly redfish. We also have speckled trout, but if you fish in the summer, fall, spring, summer, fall, you catch anything from flounder, bluefish, ladyfish. King mackerel are very prevalent. Uh, amberjack, bull redfish, which are the big adults, are out at the jetties and off the beaches. Uh, and big tarpon, big sharks. So it's kind of all over the map as far as what you're gonna catch. Of course, you always wanna catch big numbers. You always wanna catch a lot of fish, and we do that. But uh, there are those days when you know, j just that first fish or, or that biggest fish is, is really what puts a smile on their face. All the guides around here can appreciate it when they, when they see a father or a, a daughter catch their first fish and the look on their face. And that's really what it's all about. It's just a beautiful thing.